Hello, and welcome to the tutorial series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. In this tutorial, we show how to install the TDV server on a Linux operating system. Note that tutorials are not meant to be comprehensive training modules. Instead, they demonstrate a very basic use case that can be built quickly and easily. However, the Community Edition Knowledge Base contains additional information that will help you learn more and go deeper. Additional resources in the Knowledge Base include resources used to build the tutorial, such as data virtualization archive files, data source files, and a document version of this tutorial. Additional information, including documentation and training materials. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining TDV server and explaining its role in the data virtualization platform. Next, we demonstrate basic installation procedures. Finally, we summarize the contents of this tutorial. Let's begin by discussing how TDV server fits within the data virtualization platform. A Linux installation of data virtualization involves two installation packages, as shown here. TDV is the server component that provides the runtime engine for data virtualization. Developers connect to the server using a platform component called TDV Studio. Studio runs only on Windows, so it is not covered in this Linux tutorial. However, a separate tutorial is available that covers Studio installation. Business Directory is a server component that provides a browser-based user interface for data consumers. This interface provides data consumers with a catalog of available assets and also enables them to enter their own business-level metadata regarding these assets. TDV server is essential to data virtualization because it is its runtime engine. It connects to physical data sources, federates data from these sources, and presents data as virtual databases and web services. It also manages connectivity for data consumers. Business Directory presents a catalog of published virtual assets for business users. They can view metadata and sample data for these assets. Business users can also create their own highly customized business-level metadata. Next, Let's walk through the basic installation process. In this tutorial, we'll install data virtualization on a CentOS 7 operating system. See the installation guide for a complete list of supported operating systems and hardware requirements. Log in as a non-root user. Before we begin, we need to check a few things to make sure our operating system is ready for installation. First, we'll check that the Linux hosts file is correctly configured. Do a ping localhost and check the format of the host name that is returned. A correctly formatted name is shown here. This excerpt from the installation guide shows an incorrectly formatted host name. Follow the directions shown here to add a new entry to the hosts file and see the installation guide for more details. Next, check for the proper setting of Security Enhanced Linux. Enter the command shown here. The setting must be either permissive or disabled. Otherwise, follow the installation guide instructions shown here to edit the value. See the installation guide for more details. For whatever folder you want to install into, make sure you have read, write, and execute privileges. The opt folder shown here is the default installation folder. In addition to the two installation zip files shown here, you will need to obtain a license file. Unzip the TDV server file and the business directory file. Our original directory now contains 32-bit and 64-bit installers and checksum files for each component. We'll use the 64-bit installers. Change the permissions on these files as shown here. We'll begin by installing TDV server. Enter the command shown here and follow the prompts. The license agreement appears. 
you will have to click enter several times to page through the license agreement. Enter Y to accept the license agreement. You may change the default installation directory if you wish. You may also change the default base port if you wish. TDV this requires a block of 10 consecutive ports. Enter, verify, and document administrator passwords for the TDV metadata repository and database cache. We are ready to install. Enter Y and installation begins. When installation is complete, enter Y. TDV server installation is complete and its services are running. Now we want to set these services so they will automatically restart when the machine is rebooted. To do this, you must log in as root. Navigate to the installation's bin directory as shown here and run this command. Enter the name of a non-root user to restart the services. Note the target directory of the script. Now navigate to the target directory and run the scripts shown here. Now TDV services will restart whenever the machine is rebooted. Now start TDV Studio from a Windows machine. If you need to install Studio, a separate tutorial is available that will help you with this task. Enter login information. TDV is delivered with a default user of admin with the default password of admin. This user's domain is named composite. Enter the address of the server. If you change the base port, enter the correct port here. This warning message appears because we haven't installed the license yet. We'll take care of that next. Studio starts. Click OK. From the Studio Administration menu, click Launch Manager. This brings up a browser window. Enter the password and sign in. Select Licensing from the Configuration menu. On the Licensing screen, select Add License. Open your license file in a plain text editor like Notepad or Notepad++. Don't use a word processor application like Word or WordPad because it will add formatting characters. Copy the license text and paste it here. When you click OK, the license is applied. Installation of Business Directory is very similar. Log in as a non-root user. If you did not change permissions on the BD installer earlier, do so now. Run the installer and follow the prompts. Page through the license agreement. Accept the license agreement and the installer begins. You may change the default installation directory if you wish. You may change the base port if you wish. Business directory requires a block of 10 consecutive ports. Enter, verify, and document a repository administrator password. Click Y to continue, follow the prompts, and confirm completion. Just as we did with TDV server, we want to set business directory services to automatically restart when the machine is rebooted. Log in as root. Navigate to the bin folder of the business directory installation and run this script. Enter the name of a non-root user to restart the services. Note the script's target directory. Navigate to the target directory and run these scripts. Now Business Directory services will automatically restart when the machine is rebooted. Both TDV server and Business Directory are now installed. However, even though both components are running, they may not be able to synchronize with each other yet. To ensure synchronization, we'll do a one-time restart of the services. You must log in as a non-root user in order to do this. Navigate to the TDV server's bin directory and run this script. Verify that monitor, server, and repository services have been stopped. To stop business directory services, navigate here and run these scripts. 
Start TDV and Business Directory services by navigating to the appropriate directories and running the scripts shown here. Now we're ready to open Business Directory in a browser. Here we are using Chrome. Type the address of the server, colon, and the base port of Business Directory. If you used the default value, the port will be 9500. Hit enter and the browser is redirected to an HTTPS connection on port 9502. We have not installed an SSL certificate, so the browser gives us a warning. Certificate installation is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but information is available in the installation guide. Click Advanced. Now click Proceed. Log in using the default user and password in the composite domain. From the admin menu, select Sites. On the Sites screen, you can link Business Directory to one or more instances of TDV server. Click the plus sign at the bottom of the screen to add a new site. Enter the connection details for your TDV server here and save. If you set preview to yes, users will be able to view small samples of actual data in Business Directory in addition to viewing metadata. Business Directory is now synchronized with our TDV server. Now you can click Browse from the home page and the TDV server is visible. We haven't yet published any resources, so nothing is yet visible under Databases or Web Services. Our installation task is complete. Let's summarize what we've seen in this tutorial. A Linux installation of data virtualization involves two installation packages, as shown here. TDV is the server component that provides the runtime engine for data virtualization. Developers connect to the server using a platform component called TDV Studio. Studio runs only on Windows, so it is not covered in this Linux tutorial. However, a separate tutorial is available that covers Studio installation. Business Directory is a server component that provides a browser-based user interface for data consumers. This interface provides data consumers with a catalog of available assets and also enables them to enter their own business-level metadata regarding these assets. TDV Server is essential to data virtualization because it is its runtime engine. It connects to physical data sources, federates data from these sources, and presents data as virtual databases and web services. It also manages connectivity for data consumers. Business Directory presents a catalog of published virtual assets for business users. They can view metadata and sample data for these assets. Business users can also create their own highly customized business-level metadata. As you begin the installation process, keep these key takeaways in mind. Before you begin, check the installation guide for minimum hardware requirements. You will need to obtain the installation zip files for TDV server and business directory, and you will need to obtain a license file. Installation of these components is a standard Linux installation process. After installation, you will need to restart the processes in order to enable initial synchronization. After completing this tutorial, you are ready to install the data virtualization platform on Linux. You can leverage this knowledge and use the installation guide to install on Windows. You can also begin using the platform by learning common tasks performed by developers and system administrators. Thank you.